Welcome to this video. My name is Niklas and today we are going to talk about local administrator and privilege management with Microsoft Intune. So I recently published a blog post about it and I thought I could make a video too. So here we are. <laughs> uh, most operating systems know two level of interactions. On the one hand we have the standard interaction from a user where he can do his regular work and the on, on the other hand you have the administrator or privileged interaction. This allows an IT administrator or someone else to make system modifications, install or change applications and so on. But be careful this could also be misused from an attacker to gain access to the whole system. So most organizations want to manage their devices. Therefore they could use the product Microsoft Intune. In the enterprise segment of Windows we mostly encounter the fact that default end users only have default or standard permissions on their devices and not administrative rights. For the security nodes, we also need to know that you, if you have the administrative privileges, you have full access to the system and can do nearly anything you want. And on the other hand, it's also a security concern or a vulnerability if the local administrator credentials, so the password and username, is equal on multiple devices. This could allow, as Microsoft names it, a lateral traversal attack. I will now show you different methods and approaches to manage the local administrator rights on your Windows PCs with Microsoft Intune. So let's get into it. So starting off with the first approach, very easy but not really recommended. Uh, is to give yourself the Azure AD or Entra role of the Azure AD joint device local administrator role. If you're a member of this role or have this assigned, you're a local administrator on all the devices which are joined with Azure Active Directory to your tenant. This permission set is also included for the global administrator. Next up, we're switching to the Intune portal and create an endpoint security account protection policy for Windows 10 and later, which is for the profile local user group membership. We can give it, give it a name and also optionally a description, which I would recommend. And here you can select the local groups, which you can also find on your Windows 10 or 11 PC and select an action to perform on this group and here select your user or group from Azure AD, which will then be altered with the corresponding settings. So we will also take a look at this on the client side. From Windows 11, we can open the local users and groups management console. And here you can find some of the local user groups, which we can also find in Intune. And now if we open any of these groups and we applied such a policy, we can see these SID numbers, uh, the security identifiers, which we are all only known for Microsoft Azure. There's a converter, I can link that in the description, where you can transfer the object ID, which is only visible in Azure ID, to such an SID, which was more known in the on-premise and local Active Directory services. So, this time we can see my global administrator group and the Azure AD joint local device admin set, which I also explained before. Endpoint privilege management is another cool feature to establish such a functionality. This was recently released as part of the Intune suite, so it requires an additional license. Also found here in the endpoint security node under endpoint privilege management, you have two settings or two policy types. One of them is an endpoint or an elevation settings policy and the other one is a rules policy. So in the rules, you can basically configure how you want to have or which applications are allowed for privileged uh, launch. So in this example, I configured 7-zip as application and here a user can confirm, you, you can also switch it to automatic, although I wouldn't recommend this and select a validation, which the user then needs to do as soon as he wants to open the app with a business justification or just uh, his Windows authentication. Then you need to enter some attributes, such as the file name, which is mandatory, 
add a file path signature source or the file hash. It's basically just very important that this mechanism or Intune knows how to identify the files which are, yeah, can be run as administrator. So I enter the file hash. Note that this might uh, change for an update or when a new version or a different version can occur. Um, and the other maybe more reli reliable uh, method would be to set on this uh, signature sources so you can upload a certificate file um, or use it from the reusable settings and uh, maybe just uh, trust for a publisher. From Windows as a user, I can now right click that file, show more options and choose run with elevated access. This will show up as soon as the endpoint privilege management agent is installed on your device. So the policy was successfully applied. Then we need to enter a business justification like specified in the policy before. And now we also require the Windows authentication. So here I will type in my Windows Hello for Business pin. As you can see, there are still some limitations with that product. Um, this file was too early downloaded from the internet and it hasn't gone through all the checks. And there are some more limitations about it. I listed all in my blog post. Last but not least, we have Windows Labs. This stands for Local Administrator Password Solution. And I'm sure most of you will know this from the on-premise work. Attention, the Labs that we know from before is now considered as legacy Labs from Microsoft. The new labs is now the Windows Labs product name. Essentially, the functionality is equal. So we have an end device, an Azure AD joint Windows device, which will first of all get its client policy and settings through Intune. Here it's especially important or in this scenario where your client is only Azure AD joint and not represented in the local admins, in the local AD, sorry. Um, that it gets the policy to set the backup directory to Azure AD. Then the device will apply this policy, hopefully successful, and then back the local credentials, so username and password again, um, from the local admin to Azure AD to its corresponding device object. There the information will be stored. Now, if you have the right privileges or the right role, um, for example, an Intune administrator or a global administrator, you can retrieve this information. Here, we will leverage Microsoft Graph, which is generally or has generally access to Azure AD and Intune and also the device object. That's basically the workflow. And this is very cool because every device in your environment has its unique password, which will also ro rotate or has actions set uh, once after use. So this was the overview about managing the local administrator on Windows with Microsoft Intune. I hope you could learn something and enjoyed this small overview. If you have more questions or something is open, please consider to read my blog or read my other blogs about endpoint management and security on my blog oceanleaf.ch. Thank you very much and see you next time.